this is Di, and today my son Caleb is going to talk about his new to him base, an Ibanez SR300. You saw a little video of a preview of that base, and this time he's actually going to talk about how he came to be a bass player, how he came to get this bass, and he's going to demo it for you so you can hear how it actually plays. So I got started playing bass. Uh, I have a friend who's a drummer who doesn't get to drum because he lives in an apartment. And I have a friend who's a guitar player who gets to play guitar, but he, he never really got to play with us because our drummer can't drum. And I play ukulele and clarinet. And so uh, they were gonna go jam with our coworker, who's this old blues rock player from like, he used to gig in the 60s and 70s. And so he has like a whole studio in his house, like in his basement. And so they were gonna go jam. And I wasn't invited because I wasn't part of the conversation. And then uh, the our coworker, he comes up and talks to me and he's like, so do you know how to play bass? And, and I was like, no, but I'm totally willing to play. And he's like, okay, you're in. So we got to jam for the first time and it was a bunch of blues rock and I never really played bass, but fortunately blues rock is all the same song. Every single song is exactly the same. So I got to look like I knew what I was doing and it went really well and we had a fun time and we did it a few more times and we started um, sort of writing songs at my friend's apartment and then that sort of turned into us actually a band um, we started practicing down at my friend's house in his basement. You know, I was, we were supposed to pack up my friend, my other friend's drum kit when we were done, but I just, uh, just totally forgot for some reason. So then now all of a sudden the drum kit's just stuck down there. So yeah, now we're, now we play every week, every Friday down there and we don't have to set the drum kit up every single time. I played clarinet all through middle school and high school. So total about 15 years. Um, so I have a pretty good handle on how to read music and theory and playing in a group. Um, and also I learned how to play ukulele all on my own, taught myself um, through YouTube and some books and then just started just, you know, making my own interpretations of music and, and different cover songs and stuff. Picking up the bass wasn't that difficult. I'm still learning how to chill out as opposed to filling in the spaces. Like, because on clarinet, I was just Leroy jenkins the whole thing, just playing like crazy and going on the high register all the time and, and playing super fast and all over the place. And ukulele is another, like, it's a chord instrument, chord-based instrument, and it's super high-pitched and so bass is a lot of fun because I'm having to learn control, like actual control, not just being able to do whatever I want whenever I want, but actually knowing when the perfect time is for everything. I literally have just gotten my first actual bass. So for the first time since I've started playing, I actually have the opportunity to practice as much as I need to practice and also properly. Um, so I'm actually having to relearn all of my songs because I've been playing on a right-handed bass upside down because I normally play instruments left-handed. I'm starting to teach myself how to play right-handed, but it's going to take too long because me and my friends, we already have songs written, so we want to start recording and gigging. So I've, a, I've been playing on right-hand basses flipped so that I can play left-handed because that's where I've been comfortable. I've been playing ukulele for years that way, um, which is fine. It's a really easy, ukulele is a really instru easy instrument to play as opposed to bass because bass, like it actually takes muscle strength and dexterity as opposed to ukulele, which like the strings are nylon and they're super loose. It's super easy to play. Um, and also there, it's only four strings and they're spaced super far apart for these tiny string, these tiny nylon strings. So it's a really easy instrument to play. They usually have kids playing it in like Hawaii when they're like four years old. Um, but so bass, cause bass is really difficult to play upside down because 
like all of the knobs are right where your hand should be if it's flipped. So I've been playing like scrunched up, like, and it sounds like crap and I don't have my positioning right. And also on the, on my right hand, which would be someone else's left hand, all the positioning is wrong there because I have to stretch my fingers in all these awkward positions. And so I haven't been able to properly learn my parts. And currently I am teaching myself how to play right-handed, but you know, that's undoing and relearning like years of habits. So, you know, eventually I will be playing right-handed properly, but I, I just, me and my friends, we have music we want to put out there and I can't do that if I have, if I'm trying to learn how to play right-handed because that's going to take way too long. So I picked up a left-handed bass um, and I got to test it out in uh, the guitar, our local guitar shop. And I really liked it, but I didn't know enough about instruments and basses to know if it's what I really wanted. Um, and then after working at a music store and doing some of my own research, I realized it was exactly what I would want. Um, so here it is. Here she is. So it's not just an SR300. It's an SR300L for left-handed. And so the nice thing about it, I'll just go over the features that I really liked. Two pickups, nice. You have these two and then you have a fader between them so you can choose the proper balance between the two. And also you have volume control right here. And you also have three channel EQ. Um, so it's treble, mids, and then bass right here. And also, a super thin neck. I don't know how well you can tell that, but as someone who doesn't have giant spidery fingers, only small sp spidery fingers, it does help a lot to have like this super thin neck. It's just a super responsive, like the action is pretty low and I don't get a lot of fret buzz, uh, which is really nice. And especially as someone who's just learning, it helps a lot to be able to just like, I hit it and it just, it sounds right. Hit that, just, it just, it's very responsive and I really like that. Um, it sounds super, super clear, especially with the EQ, cause I can get it to sound almost exactly how, what I want. And so you get a really good bass, no pun, no pun intended. You get a really good bass to sort of tweak it and make it your own sound, which is really nice again for someone who's just starting off. To get away from the sound though, the back of it looks really nice with these two lines. I actually really like that. Like for instance, like Fenders, they'll have the single line right there, which looks good too, but I actually like the double line better. I think it looks cooler and more modern. This bridge right here, I don't know what you call that, but it's really cool because you don't actually have to thread the strings through the bridge because they, they cut off like right here. So you can just, you can just, you can start twisting it up here and then hook them in. And so that makes it a lot easier to uh, restring the instrument and adjust it. Um, so I really like that about it too. It's just in general with like the light, with the thin neck and the body is pretty thin too. It's super light, easy to maneuver. For some reason too, it actually fits in a short scale base uh, case. I think the body is not super long also. I think it's just like kind of a smaller body, like shorter body. So it's more portable while still being a long scale bass. And one last thing to talk about is my strap. It's a really ugly strap, plain, basic black. However, it's padded right here. It has a whole little pad insert right here, which makes it look really ugly because like if it, bends it all, it curls up and gets all scrunchy on the outside, but on the inside, it's soft as heck. And that's all I care about, is that I can play it for hours and I don't feel like, my shoulder doesn't feel like crap. And also I don't build a giant vascular Bane-like uh, body structure. So that's nice too. Um, Do you know what a Moby is, Caleb? It's a Moby. A Moby is a, like a front pack to carry a baby around. 
Yeah. It looks like a Moby strap. It's a Moby strap. Yeah. I, uh, what's the word? What's the word? When you, like, I retrofitted a Moby strap to my, get to, to my face. But so yeah, just to compare how this, how they fit in the same, how they fit in the, the same, same case. He makes yeah. up for his. You can't see because it's too long. But basically, your headstock is small. My headstock is short as heck. And your gouges way down. My body here, gouges way where down. Where mine doesn't come yeah. down as deep. Yeah, so mine's just generally kind of my the body and the head huh. are just shorter, and also on top of that. So your neck only goes down, the frets only go down to 19, mine go to 24. So what bass were you playing when you didn't have your own, Caleb? Uh, your bass at home, uh -huh. and at my friend's I was playing a Walmart bass. Walmart makes basses, huh? It, uh, mm, they try. Um, yeah, it sounded horrible. <laughs> Muddy farts. <laughs> Sound like it's you played the Muddy Fart it's, bass. <laughs> it sounds like a... Uh, Sounds like uh, sounds like the base had uh, Indian food and Taco Bell all in the same night. So this is my first base, and that's your first base. And now okay, this wow. sounds like a razor blade and uh, and a sniper rifle put together, <laughs> just super clear and crisp and to the point. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna demo the base now. Um, keep in mind, I've only been playing it for like a week or two, so. Yeah, so I kind of suck. So there we go. for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon. God bless. Wow, our outfits look really good together. <laughs> we both have like the colored sleeves and this dark center.